Brilliant. Thank you very much, Amanata. So welcome again, everyone. Um, this is GNDR's briefing session on the upcoming global platform for disaster risk reduction. Um, we have about six weeks until the global platform happens, and we will be kicking off today a four week process of getting your thoughts, your plans, your policy messages, what you might be doing at the global platform, everything that we might need to know so that we can collaborate and support each other. Um, at the global platform in May. Um, so if we could go to the next slide, I'll just quickly share with you our agenda for the day before handing to BJ to formally kick us off. So today we'll have a quick welcome and a quick overview of the importance of the global platform 2022 from our executive director, BJ. I will then take you through an overview of what this year's global platform is what it's focusing on and how to participate for those of you who might be new to the space. I will then give you an overview of GNDR's plans at the global platform and an overview of our draft zero policy messaging. So really the first foundations of the policy advocacy messages that we would like to share at the global platform with the hope that over the next four weeks, we can get your thoughts, your reflections and your input into these. We will then kick off into a bit more of an interactive session where we'll be asking you to participate in some polls and answer some questions for us to see what you might be doing ahead of the global platform and during the global platform. And we'll end with an open feedback session where you can ask any questions you might have or share any plans or anything that you would like to share with members on your aims for the global platform. So that's what we're doing today. And before we do that, um, sorry, if we could go back one slide, Amanata. Um, before we do that, we'll hold this slide here and I'll hand to BJ, who will kick us off with a formal welcome and overview. Over to you, BJ. Thanks, Becky. Good, good, good evening, good afternoon, good, good morning, my friends, colleagues from across the globe. We are the core travelers for swing the agenda of strengthening the resilience of the community is most at risk. We do see GPDRR, the global platform of UNDRR in Bali as a huge opportunity. So welcome all of you. I join Becky in welcoming all of you. And to facilitate a process so that we together can collectively come up with our policies, messaging, and collectively come up with a way that we can influence the thinking and actions of the various stakeholders. There are a few things that I just will touch upon. There are eight point uh, priorities for policy messaging that Becky has come up with that she will be sharing with you. But before she does that, I was just thinking that perhaps what, what is our priority uh, this year? That's what I was thinking of uh, when we were talking of the resilience building and particularly coming out of the COVID, learning so much from the COVID context, and then trying to see what is the need of the hour. The first one, in line with our strategy, global strategy, we will ask for localization being operationalized. We saw that COVID-19 context, localization is the way forward where the local actors need to have the ability to decide, to participate and lead the resilience building uh, program, as well as lead any response, preparedness at that level, and also ensure that the integration and coherence happens from the perspective of the communities most at risk. The first one is trying to see how localization can be operationalized. The second one will continue to ask for an expanded role in a world where there is a sinking space for the civil society organizations. Together we can come and see how our role can be expanded can be recognized and can be effectively uh, involved in changing uh, and transforming the life of the people who are most at risk. And number three, what we are trying to argue for is a risk informed development, where the composite and complex risk are understood 
with a systemic approach, with, with an approach which understands the interrelated relationship between the various risks, and then bring the perspective of the communities to see how the risk informed development can be an integral part of anything and everything that we do, starting from building a school to designing a health program or health policy in a country. So that is what will be our key messages on risk informed development. But having said this, one of the key things that we are also experiencing, the financing. So perhaps it is essential to see how we ask for a financing with the perspective of these four areas that I talked about. But here, we need to also see what are the various options that we have. We should not see GPDRR as a one-off event. We need to actually see how our policy engagement and policy influencing processes continue and engage in the HLPF high-level political forum uh, in New York, and also engage in the climate uh, negotiations. And uh, the particular, the climate, uh, the UNSCC uh, COP27 in Egypt. Let's actually see how we can strengthen our, our travel through the year in influencing the accents uh, and the thinking. But that is best done if we can bring our perspectives, if, our, if we are bring our lived in experience from, from our work in the ground, from our partnership with the communities most at risk and enable them to bring that perspectives themselves so that we can ensure that people listen to this lived in experience and we need to change the current paradigm of putting localization at the top and listening to the reality and listening to the lived in experience to change our policies and practices. That's what actually what the intention is. Now, uh, next uh, next one and a half hours, perhaps, uh, perhaps a little bit more than an hour, we'll actually try to ensure that we initiate this process, we initiate this process and, and don't bring it as, uh, don't accept it as something that the India Secretary is actually giving you. The India Secretary he has taken on board the midterm review consultation that we have done with all of you, uh, and many of you responded to that. We have taken on board the perspectives of the members to come up with this uh, draft uh, policy positions, but is is still open for debating, still open to incorporate what you think is appropriate. Let us collectively go together to GP, either in person in Bali or digitally connecting and virtually connecting to that event so that we can influence the policies and actions of all stakeholders that matter. Thank you very much and all the best. And I'm looking forward to attending this meeting uh, quite attentively and learning and listening from it. Thanks, and learning, PJ, for, thanks PJ for kicking us off, uh, much appreciated. Um, Amanalcha, if I could ask you to go to the next slide for me. Um, and as we wait, I will welcome some who have just joined us. Um, we've just had a quick intro and briefing from our executive director, BJ, and now we'll be getting into the, the meat of things um, for the global platform. Um, if I could ask a, a favor, if you're not speaking, if you could please mute your microphone so that we can hear everyone clearly and our fantastic translators can work as well, that would be super helpful. We will have time for open discussion and questions after this section of the webinar. So don't worry, there will be time. Brilliant, so kicking straight off, um, you'll see on the slide ahead of you to bring everyone to the same page as some of you may be new to the global platform space. Um, UNDRR will be hosting the seventh session for the global platform for disaster risk reduction this year in Indonesia between the 23rd and the 28th of May. And GNDR recognizes the importance of this global platform. The global platforms now happen once every three years. And this session marks the first session of the global platform for disaster risk reduction since the COVID-19 pandemic. And is also a very important milestone in the midterm review of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. So a couple of very important things that we'll be reflecting on in the global platform and in the lead up to the global platform. The overarching theme for this global platform has been set as from risk to resilience towards sustainable development for all 
in a COVID-19 transformed world. And for those of you who have not already registered or have not already read up about this, you can do so with this link here. So if you just type in globalplatform.undrr.org, you'll be able to find all of the information you'll need, the logistics and how to register. Um, so please, please go ahead and do that. The Global Platform will both be in person as well as hybrid. So you can also join online and participate remotely if you would prefer. The three main themes of the Global Platform include disaster risk governance, the COVID-19 recovery, and disaster risk reduction financing. There are three cross-cutting themes within this, and that's the Sendai Framework stock taking, which I'll go into a little bit more depth um, a little bit later on, leave no one behind, and linkages to the SDGs and climate action. So how the Sendai Framework, how disaster risk reduction and resilience building can and needs to link into the SDGs and climate action. So um, the top line policy advocacy messages or the themes that we work under are very closely linked to GNDR's strategy, which I know many of you fed very heavily into. So I'm just putting up here um, our strategies, three top focuses for policy advocacy. So that is around localization, around risk-informed development, and around the importance of collaboration and the space for civil society in global decision-making to bring that collaboration, bring that all of society approach. In addition to this, we will have a specific call to action linked, of course, to these three, but based on the Sendai framework midterm review stock taking that GNDR did with our members in the Global South, which I'll go into in a bit more depth shortly. So first of all, I'll take you through how we're going to do this. So the Secretariat will be heavily involved and we'll be inviting members to collaborate with us, to join so that we can share what we're all doing and support one another at the Global Platform and in the lead up to the Global Platform. And there's a number of different spaces that we'll be doing this in. Um, so I'll take you through these in a bit more depth, but an overview of this includes in person for the stakeholder forum, um, engaging in the stakeholder midterm review of the Sendai framework, um, developing, co-developing a positioning policy call to action, which I will share the first draft of, the first kind of zero draft of today for your reflections. GNDR is also involved in a number of high level sessions, official side sessions, an innovation booth slot, an Ignite stage slot, six actually Ignite stage slots, um, and a couple of unofficial side events, which I'll give you more detail on in a second. We will be launching a members activity, um, process so that we can capture what you're all doing and support each other and we'll have a specific membership engagement and communications strategy that will kick off today in the six weeks up to the global platform and afterwards. Um, next slide please. So the first of these spaces is the stakeholder forum. So the stakeholder forum is part of the official prep days of the global platform. The official prep days run on the Monday and the Tuesday of the Global Platform Week, and GNDR co-chairs and is a co-focal point of the stakeholder engagement mechanism. Um, the stakeholder engagement mechanism is running a stakeholder forum to bring together an all of society approach. And these two days, the agenda mirrors the formal Global Platform agenda, but from a stakeholder's perspective. So whilst member states are invited to participate and listen in, this will very much be led from other stakeholders outside of member states. More information about this can be found through this link here. Um, so if you search again for the global platform and UNDRR, and then look for the preparatory days, um, you'll see the stakeholder forum as one of the preparatory, formal preparatory days. Everything that happens within these prep days then feeds into the official global platform days and the declarations that are written there transitions into those high level sessions as well. So a really important space for stakeholders to be in. And I'd really encourage you as you register to attend the global platform 
to also tick to attend the stakeholder forum, you can do it in the same registration. Um, a particular session that GNDR will be working on is a session on the Sendai midterm review, which I will come to shortly. Thank you. Next slide. So GNDR has been supporting the SEM, the stakeholder engagement mechanism, in their all of society perspective on the midterm review of the Sendai framework. So next year marks an important moment for the 2030 agendas, the Sendai framework being one of them, and slightly ahead of official member state stock taking and Sendai midterm review work, the SEM, the wider all of society um, mechanism, undertook their own midterm review to gather the perspectives of all of those engaged in disaster risk reduction outside of member states. So civil society, of course, played a huge role in this and GNDR supported in capturing some of our members' initial preliminary reflections on how the Sendai framework is doing, the progress that was made and is being made, and some of the areas that really need a bit more focus to reach the targets and the goals that we are aiming for. These will shape our initial policy messages as we go into the global platform. Um, so here, GNDR is of course supporting and pushing with an all of civil society perspective. Um, we did a process of so surveying our GNDR members in Asia Pacific, Africa and America and Caribbean regions. So really trying to capture our members from the Global South perspectives first. Um, so thank you so much to many of you who fed into that. We then developed some regional reports to capture the initial reflections on the Sendai framework and put this into a global report, really pulling out the challenges, the progress, the opportunities and the recommendations moving forward coming from across those regions. Um, you can find this um, global report on our website. Um, so if you just search gndr.org and go to the policy advocacy space, you'll be able to see that. This is being fed directly into the wider SEM stakeholder framework analysis um, and will act as a foundation for our policy asks and our call to action and will directly feed into the NGO's major groups declaration that will go in ahead of the global platform. So this is an important space where we really hope to get your thoughts, your reflections on the initial kind of draft zero as we go into our open session a bit later on today, but also after the webinar. So in addition to this, um, a few spaces just for you to be aware at where GNDR will be heavily involved. Of course, we'll also be mapping where you'll be involved so we can support you as well. Um, we are co-organizing one of the high level sessions on strengthening governance to reduce disaster displacement risks. Um, and that links to one of our six risk drivers on displacement. We are also involved in another high level session on breaking the silos towards multi hazard, multi sectoral approaches to managing risks. So, really trying to bring in that all of society approach and the importance yeah. that civil society has in playing for that all of society approach um, there. Um, we're also co organizing a number of official side events. So, um, one of which is with cadre um, on leave no one behind, specifically focusing on risk information. Another is on accelerating disability inclusion. Um, and a third is on addressing loss and damage, supporting the most vulnerable, and that's with the platform for disaster displacement. So linking into our climate work as well. We also have six Ignite stage slots and the UNDRR team have kindly given us slightly longer slots to be able to organize um, live streaming into some of our communities on the front line of risk. So trying to create that space for two-way dialogue with communities on the front line of risk that might not have been able to travel and, att and attend the global platform in person. We are doing this in partnership with the IFRC, which is fantastic. And of course, we have an innovation booth, which is set up like a market stall, where we will be promoting our risk informed development guide um, which is another space that you'll see us. We have a couple of unofficial side events that we hope to run at the same time. 
So one on making displacement safer and also a donor roundtable. And we are very lucky that the Swiss government have agreed to co-host this with us to try and create a space where donors can reflect on the discussion, the challenges, the thematic things that have come through at the global platform and feedback from that donor perspective and connect civil society to donor thinking. In addition to this, um, we will kick off today, although we've already slightly kicked this off because we had it in our newsletter and I know it's already gone out to you on the community platform to ask if you would be um, joining um, the global platform and what activities you'll be doing. Um, we will be launching a mapping after today's session to hear from all of you about what you plan on doing, what sessions you're involved in, what your key policy advocacy messages might be. And we will be pulling that all together as a briefing pack so that we can share with all members where we all will be so that we can create a way of supporting each other and collaborating and championing each other's work um, as a GNDR network. Um, for those who will be there in, per in person, we will hold morning briefings each day at the global platform. And these morning briefings will also be shared um, as bullet points via the community platform um, after the global briefing. I can see something's going on with the screen. Um, Daniela, if you could support Amanata perhaps. Um, we will also be developing a specific communication strategy um, and a membership engagement strategy in the next six weeks. Um, so in the lead up to the global platform and during and just after so that we can also debrief. So there'll be a little bit more engagement, a bit more communication going out um, uh, around this. So do keep your eyes open for the communications that come through and feel free to get as involved as you can. Next slide, please. Um, so moving on to GNDR's zero draft policy messages. So as I mentioned, um, we have developed a zero draft of some policy and advocacy messages that we would like to champion at the global platform. This has been based on the survey that we did with our members in the global south, reflecting on the progress of the Sendai framework and what areas needed to be championed, needed to invest more time and resources in to reach the targets and the progress that are really needed. Um, so we have eight key messages that I'll dive into a bit more deeply in a second, but here you can see that they are framed around listening to the community on the front line of risk, investing at the local level, the importance of coordination and collaboration and the role that civil society has to play in that, the importance of looking at gender inequality, of inclusion, of learning from COVID-19, um, of risk governance in conflict-affected states, and of youth engagement. Um, so I'm now going to take you, hopefully, into our um, into our draft document. And I'm just going to check if we are able to do this because um, we're having some tech problems. So I'm not sure if I could ask you to stop sharing the screen for a second. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, I will now try and share my screen and Daniela, if you could let me know if you can hear when I share this Word document, that would be fantastic. Are you still able to hear me? Sorry to jump in, it seems some members are saying that they, there is no sound. I'm receiving a message from Gorex saying that there is no sound, please. Um, so that would come from from their end, sure. uh, as everyone else could could hear. So if if he can reset his his computer and give access to 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 the to the computer to Zoom to permit access. Thanks, Daniela. Um, I'm going to try and share my window again. Um, I'm going to carry on talking. Can you let me know if you can still hear me once? The word document comes up. Are you still able to hear me? Yes. Brilliant. And hopefully you can also see well. my screen. Um, so I'm just going to take you through our 
zero draft call to action. Um, and this is something that will be circulated to you all afterwards and we'll have a bit of an open discussion at the end of this webinar to get your thoughts and your feedback on this. Um, so please keep in mind, um, this has been definitely influenced by our midterm review surveys and is definitely a, a zero draft. So we really want to continue to engage with you to refine some of these messages. So you'll see on this call to action paper, we start off with just a bit of background on the importance of this particular session, um, including the Sendai Declaration, the Sendai Framework, the Midterm Review, the midpoint um, of that uh, 2030 stock taking moment. Um, a little bit more information on our midterm review process and a bit of context. So some important things that we'll need to reflect on in the lead up to and during the global platform. So the, this context that risk is increasing globally and the complexities around the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, but also um, ongoing conflicts that we're seeing and the secondary impact that's happening, having on other areas of the world as well. Um, so linked to all of this, um, GNDR urges decision makers at global, national and local level to champion our three key areas. So localization, risk-informed development and collaboration for an all of society approach to disaster risk reduction. However, specifically, GNDR calls for global decision makers to support and champion the following messages with member states in the lead up to, during and after the global platform. So the first is focused around listening to the community on the front line of risk. So meaningfully including local leaders in the implementation and monitoring of the Sendai framework institutionalizing, including community voice, so making it very systematic, um, voice, knowledge and recommendations in decision making to make sure that it's happening at every stage and is not an afterthought or not a tick box exercise, but really meaningful inclusion. To promote the analysis of the systemic nature of risk and risk informed development from the perspective of communities most at risk. So really trying to champion that local perspective of risk, um, recommendations, challenges, and what needs to be done. The second area is around investing at the local level. So we are calling on decision makers to prioritize making sure risk reduction finance reaches the local level, to empower and finance locally led action for risk reduction. Here, we would like local leaders to be included in decision making spaces at local, national and global spaces. So meaningfully include local leaders in deciding how risk reduction budget is spent at the local level. And of course, in addition to this, to make sure that we're integrating climate related hazards and their impacts in, on local DRR planning. Our third area um, or call to action is to strengthen the coordination and coherence for risk informed development. Specifically to recognize the role that civil society organizations have to lead this collaboration. So within this, we are calling for all to recognize the systemic nature of risk and adopt a coherent approach across all the global frameworks for effective risk informed development, risk reduction and resilience building for communities most at risk. Um, we would like to link DRR decision making to the climate change negotiations, specifically around loss and damage and the need for the global north to increase financial support to the global south. We call on decision makers to make sure that they're incorporating the understanding of the most recent IPCC report in the strategy for implementing the second part of the Sendai framework. So making sure those different frameworks, those different commitments are linking to recognize the role that civil society organizations have to lead this collaboration. So we're really asking member states and global decision makers to accept and strengthen the role of local CSOs in convening the all of society approach to effectively achieve the Sendai framework commitments. Our fourth area is around recognizing and tackling gender inequality as a driver of risk. 
So really pushing this message that gender inequality is a key barrier to achieving the progress required for the Sendai framework targets and to invest in action to meaningfully tackle gender inequality for strength and disaster risk reduction. So this goes beyond just bringing a gender lens into the Sendai framework, but meaningfully tackling that inequality in order to build resilience and to implement the Sendai framework targets. Within this, we call to empower women leaders to meaningfully engage in disaster risk reduction at all levels. Our fifth area is around transitioning from seeing inclusion as a standalone topic and recognize the intersectional dynamics of marginalization in relation to risk and to integrate inclusion across all areas of the Sendai framework. Our sixth call to action is to learn from COVID-19. So to understand and address the weaknesses in risk governance that COVID-19 demonstrated, to learn from the socioeconomic and political elements of risk reduction highlighted by the pandemic, to include biological disasters such as pandemics into the Sendai framework going forward, and of course within that to work to ensure and continue to work to ensure everyone has access to the COVID-19 vaccine. Our seventh area is the importance of strengthening DRR governance in conflict affected states. So we call for support specifically for conflict affected and fragile states to implement disaster risk reduction governance policy and plans. And we've identified that there's a need to invest in understanding which conflict affected states do not currently meaningfully include DRR governance understand the barriers that are there and identify solutions together. And the eighth call is to involve youth in disaster risk reduction. So this has been highlighted as a missed opportunity. So a real call to meaningfully include our youth leaders in all levels of disaster risk reduction decision-making. So I'm gonna stop sharing there. Um, so that is our kind of foundational messages that have been developed through our survey with our members in the Global South and analysis on a bit of a midterm review of the Sendai framework. Um, I'd like to invite Amanata if you could share the presentation screen again, that would be super helpful. Thanks, Aminata, if you could just go back a few slides. Um, here we go, thank you. Um, so if you could just go to the previous slide and then we'll, I'll let you know when we go forward. Um, so they, they are our eight um, key kind of messages that we have drawn together. Um, and I can see lots of questions coming in. We'll have some time for questions later on. Um, but yes, we will, we will share these and get them translated as well. Um, that was a lot of information um, and I understand you'll be processing. So we are going to pause here for a second. I'm going to hand to Shivangi, my colleague. Um, so if we go to the next slide and we will try to have a bit more interaction with you to get your thoughts and reflections. Um, so next slide, please. Over to you, Shivangi. Yeah, thank you, Becky. Thank you so much. And uh, so we we heard Becky talking about member activity mapping, and this is very useful. I think it's going on at the uh, at the regional level uh, through the regional advisory group meetings and also national coordination meetings as well. And uh, we are getting already the information, but this opportunity we, we thought that we would like to hear from you what what kind of engagement uh, uh, you will have at the global platform and we are going to run a poll uh, on these questions that you see there uh, and I'll request my colleague Daniela to initiate a poll with the first question uh, if you or your organization is attending the global platform in person just a just a second 
and the questions are there in all the languages. So in French and Spanish, so you can choose that. We are having some issues as uh, we are both logged in with the same account. I'm launching it, if you can. Yes, yeah, can you launch yeah, it? I have launched it. So request members to kindly input. And sorry, the question was, are you organizing any of the following, the side event Ignite State Innovation Platform, or you're just attending? All right, let me just... So the results that what we get right now is that we have 11% of the members who are attending a side event or organizing a side event, where 4% of them will be participating in Ignite stage, 2% of them in innovation platform, either organizing or participating, and there are 80% of them, they are just attending. So, Thank you for this information. And I think we'll come with, uh, forward with some details afterwards with you. I'm going to end this poll. And these are the results for you. So it's 79%, 13 was side event. So I'm going to stop sharing this. And uh, can you, Daniela, now move to the second, second question, please? Shivangi, sorry, sorry. Uh, I think people are responding in the chat box. Uh, I'm not sure if they, they understand the system. So if you can repeat, please, because I, I'm seeing a lot of response in the chat box. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I can see that the members are saying that they are planning to join. Uh, we request members to uh, input in this particular uh, poll exercise and uh, the survey form which has been circulated uh, globally, I think you should input there so that we know exactly who are attending which, se uh, uh, which uh, session. Sorry, there is some technical problem here. I am relaunching the poll. And... Yeah, I'm not Shivarji. being able. Yes. Uh, this actually, uh, uh, to me, is a bit incomplete because, you know, uh, we applied for a grant session from Friendship Bangladesh and they replied, mm -hmm. you know, we are in waiting. So I can't say yes or no. Uh, yeah, that taken. Uh, that taken, there could be some changes at the end of it if there is a space and UNDRR does accommodate uh, at the later stage. Uh, so we'll wait for that, but that's fine. I think uh, this poll, I mean, this information we can, uh, we'll keep seeking uh, from now until uh, global platform. Uh, let me just move to the second one, which I'm trying to do that. I'm sorry for this technical trouble. No, I, I don't think so that, um, uh, I think we can, what we can do is that we can come to this uh, little later, Daniela, uh, if we can sort it and we'll give floor back to uh, Becky because we're not being able to move to the next question, unfortunately. I'm sorry for this technical problem right now. No problem. Thanks, Shivangi. Um, always a challenge. Um, if I could request um, someone to take off the screen, that would be very helpful. Oh, I can see that it's, is it, is it now working? Has it just started working? 
Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's try again then. Should we kick sorry, off first? Sorry. We no are worries, in yeah, we already have yeah. answers also. Are your organization attending the global platform in person? And uh, oh, we have good numbers there. I'm going to quickly end the poll in two seconds now. And we have 67, 68% of them saying they are going to attend. So that's fabulous. And that gives us all an opportunity to meet and collaborate uh, at GP. Uh, and and that, that's, that's really nice. We also shared the results for you to see. And then if, let me see if I can quickly move to the next, next I one. I've done it. Yeah, thank you. So we've done the second one on activities and yes. over to the last, which I will launch. Yeah, great. Thank you. What is your uh, policy? So, yeah, thank you, whoever is supporting me. Uh, what are your key policy messages? Uh, that is a long answer that you can kind of input and then we can gather those inputs from you. And what are your aims for a global platform? This is slightly longer answer and will give you some time to kind of input that for now. Yeah. Thanks so much, Shivangi. So let's leave, we'll leave these two questions up for a couple of minutes just to get your initial reflections and yes we will circulate all of these questions afterwards a survey's actually gone out already to everyone thank you Daniela for doing that on the global platform um, but we will we'll recirculate this afterwards as well thank you Becky I think so we we have gathered uh, your responses and uh, as Daniela mentioned, this will also be circulated through your uh, through email. Uh, and Becky, should we move forward then? Sure, thank you, Shivangi. So we can we can end that now. And Daniela, if I could ask someone to then remove the polls from the screen. I'll give you a couple of minutes to sort the, the tech stuff out. In the meantime, um, the next slot of the session, um, we are going to open for a bit of a round room, if you like, a virtual room discussion, any questions that you might have, um, any feedback that you would like to share with us, um, either specific questions on the global platform around logistics or anything that you might want to know, um, or some feedback around those policy messages or to share what you're doing, what your key messages are. Um, whatever you would like to, to share here. I will try and, and run this and I recommend that if you do have um, something to input, if you could just raise your hand um, and I will invite you to the floor to share um, when you're ready. And if you're not speaking, if you could just keep yourself on mute. Um, That's it, well, yes. So I'll give you two minutes to have a little think as we're trying to sort our tech glitch out. Mm 
मैं देख रहा था गौरी शंकर जी को इनविटेशन नहीं दिया Um, Daniela Amanata, could you let me know if this is a problem we're not going to be able to fix or not? There seems to be an issue with the polls and the screens. Um, I, I cannot see the polls at all. So if you, uh, if we can just stop sharing the screens, Aminata. Do you, do you still see the polls? I do, it might just be me though. Because you launched oh. them, perhaps you need to end them. Because they are not visible on, on my screen. No problem. Okay, thank you. Well, let's just, let's carry, carry on. Um, it looks like it's stuck just from my side then, but at least you can all see each other. Um, so I might need a little help then from you, Daniela, to see who has their hands up. Um, I can see a few. So I will invite um, Ipsita. I can see you've got your hand up. Would you like to jump in first? Hello. Hello. Sita. Uh, hello, this is Pradeep. Ah, uh, if we could meet, if we could meet your uh, mic. Think you uh, Let's move on to the next. Um, Leonard, I can see your hand is up. Would you like to jump in and uh, kick us off? Uh, yes, I, I'm a part of, of uh, two delegations, actually. One is a, a SMC network delegation, uh, as we have about in total 150 partners around the globe, and some of our partners are here. And then, then I'm also a part of the, the uh, Swedish network delegation. So one, one concern regarding this SMC network delegation is how can we facilitate uh, partner organizations to join the 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 the, uh, the the midterm review process and on national levels. For example, how can we help a partner in uh, Cambodia to link to the to the to the national review process? I think this this is a, a, a key because we really see our participation as a part of of uh, joining. Uh, and working with with the midterm review on national levels, so that would be excellent if GNDR could facilitate that process. I don't know how it should work if you facilitate or support the national uh, focal points in the different countries to link up or yeah, but that is a, a key concern from from uh, my side. I think. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks, Leonard. And I'll jump in very quickly. We actually had a meeting. This morning with UNDRR and the, the friends of UNDRR member states, um, they've just really kicked this process off. Um, so they're, they're only just really starting to think about that. They have now identified the countries that they'll do a bit more of a deep dive into and want to support uh, civil society to engage with member states. Um, we've just been shared that list of countries and the advice from UNDRR was for GNDR to connect with the regional offices. Um, one of the first moments, which is why this global platform is so important, is that this will be launched there as a key moment to connect. Um, but also, if you are a member, we'll, we'll do a bit of kind of multiple communication here. After the global platform, we will be connecting and then supporting. But if you're a member that particularly wants some support to engage with your government or your regional UNDRR office, please do reach out because we're, we will be trying to connect those dots for sure. Um, and very well noted. Leonard, thank you very much for that important question. Um, brilliant. Okay, I can now see the screen, so that's brilliant. Um, I will, I'll just go with the list that I can see popping up. So Graciela Salaberry, would you like to jump in and add your reflections?
Hola. Perdón, pero yo no escucho la traducción. Ok, un momento, Graciela. Eh... Okay, we had some issues with translation, but I think we are okay now. Uh, Graciela, over to you. Okay, gracias. En, en primer lugar, este, soy realmente feliz de ver esta multitudinaria reunión en el día de hoy. Agradecerle especialmente a todo el staff de la Secretaría, Becky, que estoy... Este, agradeciendo especialmente también por tu trabajo para llevar a la red a esta plataforma que es eh, tan especial para todos nosotros los que estamos trabajando en estos específicos temas. Con, con respecto a todas las acciones, a, a todas las cosas en las que vamos a estar trabajando y representados allí en la plataforma, eh, Tal vez lo hablaron y me lo perdí, así que hago este hincapié en una experiencia personal que tuvimos con otros compañeros cuando fue la plataforma en Sendai, en la que nosotros hacíamos, los que estábamos presentes, eh, nos relevábamos y hacíamos pequeños, muy pequeños informes de lo que significaba para el que estaba allí en la plataforma estar y ver qué estaba pasando y cuáles habían sido realmente los acuerdos y si valía o no la pena estar. Eh, lo pongo como, como una idea, eh, a veces eh, ese contacto de persona a persona que se hace a través de, de un par de párrafos significa mucho para los que estamos, eh, para los que no estamos allí, para los que estaremos seguramente en forma virtual o acompañando eh, estas acciones. Y por ahí uh, había un mensaje en el chat que también hacía sentido para mí, eh, hablando de si valía la pena tener un mensaje regional. Es decir, más allá del mensaje global, que creo que ha sido fantástico, eh, Becky, tú lo has mostrado, tener también un, una visión regional de lo que está ocurriendo en cada uno de nuestros lugares. Este, bueno, nada más que eso, felicitarlos nuevamente, quedo en, en silencio y escuchándolos. Gracias. Thanks very much um, for that introduction, Graciela. A great idea, and I think we can add that idea of capturing paragraphs um, from maybe those who will not attend as part of our membership mapping exercise and um, to invite those to share to share their reflections even if they can't be there so that's great we will we'll add that on um, and in terms of regional positioning um, sorry if i could remind everyone just to to mute if you're not asking a question that would be super helpful um, in terms of the regional messaging um, Brilliant. I think it would be great if we have some of our national focal points and regional teams to do that. One caveat just to be aware of. So the call to action that we will develop at the global level will go into a formal declaration to UNDRR. This is under the NGO major group constituency. We can only do one. So it has to be at the global level for this one. Obviously we can connect to the regional platforms and we can engage in the regional platforms when they happen. But for this particular space, we can only have one global declaration that goes in, but it's a very good point that we need to be connecting um, to the regional levels, which is, which is why we started at the regional level with the midterm review reflections. And we've got those regional reports as well. But thank you for that. Okay, next on my list, I can see Pradeep. Pradeep, over, over to you. Yeah, it's, it's uh, <clears throat> my apologies, and it's, I joined it is uh, tomorrow's link. It's, uh, thanks, if, if Sita is bring back me here. But it's, it's uh, <clears throat> looking back, it's uh, all this is a disaster. It's you no know, disaster and resilience. It's uh, learning, learning. It's enough in its Orisha, particularly India context, and particularly this is uh, resilience building and adaptation. And these are all very prominent, and it's, it's, it's the civil societies working with the government and influencing policy 
to to <clears throat> uh, risk reduction it is generous so that it is if at all any chance comes then it will be will be happy to present it is, it is how the localization is there how networking is there and it's how government and civil society working together to minimize the risk and it it will be it will be great opportunity for us to uh, make some it's evidence based demonstration or the yeah so that it is uh, we can share and uh, all the things are here and we will be happy to to um, 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 <clears throat> share this how micro and macro linkages even if how community and it is you know this is resilience that has added value and bringing innovation and inclusion it is linking with this global perspective even if it is assessment report of this ipcc 6 so that it is there are inner of inner planning and it is good reflections also there case studies are there we will be happy to share if time comes any moment thank you so much brilliant fantastic work and yes that would be great um to share that as we reach out for our mapping exercise thank you for for sharing um i'll jump to kazai kazi apologies if i've pronounced it wrong over to you yes okay uh, thank you this is kazi uh, from friendship bangladesh i'm also uh, uh, will take the opportunity to be part of the smc delegation uh, as uh, we are uh, having support from smc through edx uh, but i have three specific question one is uh, there are plenty local innovation for disaster risk reduction any chances i really want to share those innovation i know uh, gndr uh, will have the opportunity to have some uh, side events and the ignite session and the opportunity we can uh, get those chances to share our innovation number one number two uh, we have an approach is called cidrr community initiated disaster risk reduction uh, there are uh, many research organization evaluated and they identified is a one of the best approaches so that uh, uh, we are planning to publish this uh, as a policy paper at the same time the whole uh, research findings in the uh, gpdrr so do you have any 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 space or scope for me uh, to share this presentation and this uh, publication into your forum number 3 last but not least uh, like last time when geneva uh, we organized a workshop in bangladesh with the gndr member uh, to identify their issue and we prepared a paper and we took it to geneva and like same similarly we are planning to do the same here in dhaka uh, within short time and we are planning to involve government too so if you have any idea or any suggestion or if you want to be part of this that's all thank you thank you so much for the the clear questions um certainly i'm sure we would be very keen to be involved in the in your last question and you can reach out to your kind of regional focal point i think is the best person to do that with and and get um your country national focal point involved as well and they'll be starting to do that with with all members after this session as well so that will be the space to do to do that um in terms of arranging spaces and scope to present um we do have spaces that will be that will be presenting local innovation so we have as i presented um earlier we have side events that we've secured um co-organizing and we've also got these ignite stages now there was a very um strict process of applying for these and these have already been applied for with gndr's partner organizations so views from the frontline and various other projects that we have um so that application process has finished um so unfortunately if you've if you've not already put in your application to do that um there isn't a formal space and i think someone mentioned this earlier if you have not heard back from undrr um that they have contacted everyone who has been successful for those spaces so if you've not heard back it might be worth reaching out to the undrr contact that you applied through um some will be on a wait list for the ignite stage um but otherwise it's it's yeah the the time for applying for these spaces has gone um there's also a question on the unofficial side events so this might be somewhere um that cuz i you could be involved in so i mentioned that gndr are hoping to host 
and run to unofficial side events. Now, these will not be included in the formal agenda of the global platform, which is why they're unofficial, but they happen around the same time. Now, pre-COVID, when there weren't as many restrictions, that might mean um, reserving a space in a particular office or host organization and holding a round table and inviting people to come and do a round table on another topic, a bit of a learning session that won't feed directly into the declaration, but at least is happening around the same time. We are trying to do this. Uh, the first step would be remotely. So if you have topics that you would like to do a webinar or workshop on at the same time to engage with people as they'll all be kind of logged on remotely, and um, then that's a really good space and option to do that. So um, I guess at worst, the two that we shared are making displacement safer and our donor roundtable would be remotely with a few people um, there at the global platform. Um, at best, and I would encourage um, you to go and study the global platform website quite heavily because the COVID restrictions are quite tight. At best, you might be able to reserve a space in one of the 16 hotels that they've linked in their COVID bubble, um, but it will be more tricky. So we would encourage a remote informal side events where you could bring that that space in um, but I would encourage you to reach out to national focal points and our regional leads as well for that brilliant okay so and the next person I can see on the list is Guru over to you hello can you hear me yes clearly uh, okay, uh, I'm Guru Naik. I'm from Afghanistan, and uh, I have two things to share. The first thing is, is uh, we have uh, I had applied for Ignite stage, and we have uh, got um, confirmation from uh, GPDRR secretariat that uh, our uh, topic has been accepted, and our topic is around uh, you know EcoDRR. We have done an EcoDRR uh, project in in Afghanistan. Uh, which has been successful. And uh, so we want to share our experience of how we can reduce disaster at the same time, improve uh, climate change adaptation in the context of Afghanistan. So that's that's where we are. And uh, so I'll be happy if uh, our GNDR uh, participants uh, could also attend that session. So this is an invitation. And the second is, uh, I'm slightly concerned about uh, the participation of Afghanistan government because uh, you know this is the first time uh, you know you know Afghanistan uh, went through this political crisis and the current government of Afghanistan is not recognized by the international community and uh, previous uh, G uh, GPDRR or AMCDRR we used to have a lot of national level consultation with the government um, uh, you know in in past but this time there has been literally no consultation. So we are going, but we don't know whether the government of Afghanistan uh, is going to represent. So this will, this will surely have an impact on uh, even the global platform knowing what is happening in Afghanistan. Uh, yeah, at the same time, the midterm review that we are talking about, I don't know whether we'll get any, any information from Afghanistan for the midterm review. So just wanted to know uh, if you can get in touch with the UNDR, uh, you know, the secretariat and find out if, uh, if there is any representation from government of Afghanistan, because we have not seen that in country. Yeah, so that's, those are the two points I have. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you so much. And brilliant, we, I think we'd be very happy to share the information of that session please do share on the community platform and when we reach out yes, to do that membership mapping um and we will be there um to support and yes we can so we have i'm having fortnightly meetings with the UNDRR team so i can ask in our next meeting um around the afghanistan representation and any recommendations on how to overcome this from global the global level um for sure Okay, brilliant. Um, I can see a few more questions, a few more hands coming up, which Becky, is great. Becky, just, uh, I'm not really, I'm a bit confused, and I'm not sure anyone from national uh, body from Bangladesh here, uh, but uh, 
my ideal intention to know if you have the opportunity or scope for the NGOs, uh, your member organizations, then I will definitely talk to the national body. But the intention, I believe that this platform, today's work, uh, program is to clarify, to you know, unfold what are the opportunity and scopes available for the members. And then if I need to talk national body, we can. But that I actually, I'm not clear your reply. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. And this is just the first, first stage, first briefing, and we'll be in touch for the next steps. But good to share all the things you're thinking about. I think some are at different stages in this. Brilliant. Um, so Hannah, I can see your hands up. Over to you. Yes, thank you. My name is Sonia Rahman from Bangladesh, uh, the Indian member and also working with the Indian Bangladesh. So Bangladesh is still working on the risk profiling part of the national adaptation plan. So I think uh, GPDRR will be a good uh, platform to about risk profiling and about the midterm review of Sindhai framework. But my intention is uh, two intentions. First one is that uh, you mentioned in your uh, presentation, youth leadership in all level from local to global stage. And second one is a uh, gender. So how uh, ZNDR can support members like me or other organization, youth-led women-led organization to meaningfully engage with the uh, ZPDRR and how we can co uh, collaborate or, uh, and cooperate. Thank you, Becky. Brilliant, thanks so much. Really, really important um, question. And I'd say a quick, I'll say a quick response and then maybe we can touch base bilaterally as well. So the youth constituency, there's, um, so if I take us back to the SEM, the stakeholder engagement mechanism that works with UNDRR, that is co-chaired by GNDR, has 16 constituencies and the youth major group is one of them. Um, so if you would like to be, so that's how it kind of feeds up for specific groups, um, whether that's women and gender, whether that's indigenous, whether that's youth, that would be a very specific space that we would encourage you to sign up for and to be part of. Um, and I know Daniela was sharing links, um, but if you go to that global platform website and look at the stakeholder forum and the SEM, you'll be able to see how to sign up to be part of that space um, specifically. Um, brilliant and, and great to, to hear that you're championing that message as well. Um, and thank you, Daniela. I can see you've put all the, all the links there that was in my presentation. Um, there are a few questions in the chat box, but there are also a few other hands going up. So Jessica, I'll invite you to jump in now. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Becky. Hello, I'm Jessica from Yakum Emergency Unit Indonesia. So I would like to share our involvement in the GPDRR. So our concept note for the innovation platform uh, was successful and we will be also uh, joining the event in person together with uh, our partners. So our uh, the innovation platform will be focusing on the community-led inclusive innovation for disaster risk management. So we would be happy to join the GNDR uh, pre-site events also in Bali, Indonesia, and please also come by to our booth for the innovation platform. And we are also involved in the GPDRR substantial consultation hosted by the Indonesian government. So that's the update from our side. Thank you so much, Big. Brilliant, that's fantastic. Thanks, Jessica. And yeah, we look forward to capturing that and making sure that we're at your sessions as well. Um, brilliant, I can see no more hands up. I can see quite a few questions in the chat box, um, both to everyone and directly to me. So maybe I'll just go through and try and um, and try and address some of them. Um, first of all, Daniela, you've you've just messaged saying someone has asked you to read their question in Spanish. Um, yes, which so you're very welcome to channels so that you can listen to the rendition. I'm going to change the Spanish channel. Como sucede muy a menudo, no se valora la inclusión del manejo y restauración de los ecosistemas con una visión integral por lo que sugiero que en el documento se expliciten el uso de las soluciones basadas en la naturaleza, resaltando la importancia de los bienes y servicios ecosistemáticos para la reducción de riesgos de desastres y la mejor adaptación al cambio climático.
Brilliant. Thank you, Daniela, for sharing that um, for us in Spanish. So I'm hearing a request to include that ecosystems um, narrative and link linkages to climate change in, in some of these policy messaging as well. So that's been noted. Thank you. Um, I will go to the questions in the chat box now. If any more spring to your mind, we have a, about 15 more minutes. So do you feel free to put your hand up? So let me have a look. Um, so does GNDR have any plans to support organizations in the global south to attend the global event in Indonesia? Um, so this is a tricky one. We get lots of requests for this each global platform. Um, we do not have the funding to pay for and financially support our members to be there. We are trying to champion some of our members. So we've made a commitment to try and make sure that our project funding, so the, the funding that we get through some of our projects means that we have an equal number of our project partners who are members and secretariat staff. So we will be doing that um, and that will be directly linked to some of those side events that I presented to you. So GNDR members that are partners, um, such as in projects like Views from the Frontline in making displacement safer um, and in the local leadership for global impact um, may well be supported. It's a very small number, so about uh, six or seven secretariat staff and six or seven members will be supported. Um, and unfortunately, we just don't have the funds beyond our projects to be able to financially support members. What we will be doing is, is giving a bit of a, a call out to our INGO members um, to encourage them if they do have their financial means to support their local partners and that commitment to localization to do something similar to try and encourage them to be giving an equal amount for secretariat staff to local partner CSOs. Um, we've also been working with the stakeholder forum, so the SEM, so if you're coming to the stakeholder forum, um, there was a call that went out to the local civil society organizations in the global south who are already actively engaged in the SEM. Um, so if you're not engaged in the SEM, um, but would like these types of opportunities in the future, I'd really encourage you to sign up to be part of the stakeholder engagement mechanism. Um, they had a number of slots that have now been decided um, that went out for, for funding. Um, again, a very small number sponsored by UNDRR. So unfortunately, we would love to be able to do that, but we don't have the means to do that. Um, Okay, the next question. Um, so it's been a, a direct question to me, but potentially helpful for everyone around uh, the COVID bubble system that UNDR are organising. Um, so again, I would really encourage you to have a look at the Global Platform website and particularly to go to the logistics of around travelling and being there. Um, there's, there's some information on there and it's supposed to be updated in the next fortnight um, with more. Um, we have maybe slightly more information so if you need it please just get in touch with me bilaterally but basically because of the COVID-19 situation and the Indonesian government being our host and the UN wanting to limit the spread of COVID at UN events there are some strict COVID protocols that are going to be in place. There's a number so in the in the conference there will be things like social distancing, like enhanced cleaning between sessions. Um, on entering in Indonesia, you have to fly straight to Bali. You cannot connect via Jakarta or any other part of Indonesia. And your visa will be specifically for Bali as if it's a different country. Um, and you will be invited to apply for your visa once you've registered. So first of all, you have to register for the global platform. Once your registration has been accepted, the UNDRR team send that information to the Indonesian government who will write a letter to you via email and you'll be invited to apply for your visa specifically for Bali, specifically for the dates. And you then go into a COVID bubble-esque um, system, slightly similar to the, to the Olympics one, if you remember that. So the UNDRR team will be organising shuttle buses from the airport in Bali. 
straight to your hotel and you are only allowed to stay in 16 hotels that the UNDRR team have negotiated with the Indonesian government. They are a mixture of prices. We pushed very heavily to make sure that this was um, accessible for all and not just five-star conference hotels. So there's a good, there's a good cross mix within those 16 hotels. Um, they should be up on the website this week. Um, if they're not, then reach out to us bilaterally or your focal point for GNDR and we can see if we can share that list to you. Um, and, and similarly, um, there'll be a shuttle bus from that hotel to the conference center every day, which you'll have to get. So it limits movement around the island um, and you won't be allowed to kind of freely then travel on to other parts of the island or across Indonesia afterwards. In addition to that, you will have a compulsory COVID-19 test when you arrive at the airport, which is different if you were traveling into another part of Indonesia and quarantining. Um, and you'll have daily lateral flow tests at the hotel, administrated by the hotel. Um, so there'll be medical staff that will do that every day to check um, that you're safe to then get on the shuttle bus to the conference center. Um, so those COVID restrictions, they're still in place and they might be slightly different to wider Indonesian government restrictions, but it's really protocol that both the UN and the host government have come to, to try and make sure these big UN conferences are not acting as a COVID spreader. Um, so we will share a link, I suppose, after this call with, with that information if you can't find it on the website so you know exactly where it is. Um, another, another thing to mention with that is that you have to be double vaccinated to attend the global platform. Um, this is something that's non-negotiable from our, the host government. So um, it's another, another barrier, but it's something that we have to respect and is uh, a legal issue from, from the Indonesian government. So that's something that you'll have to have if you're planning on attending in person. Um, I hope that was helpful. Keeping an eye on time, you have 10 minutes left. Um, I'll jump to the next question. Um, so a question from Ruth. So I'm in Cameroon and my organization works on the SDGs, mainly on agriculture, risk, women, internally displaced people and connecting to conflict how to make partnerships with other organizations. So that is a question, a very good question. Please do get in touch via our community platform. Um, Daniela, if you could share some information on how to sign up to that, perhaps the link if you're not already, I think your members should be signed up to that. But that is the first space where you can share with um, all members um, on, on what you're doing. Um, so I would recommend you, you do that. Um, and I can see a couple more hands up. Um, Leonard, you were first, um, and then I'll jump over to, to Ruth to follow up on that intervention. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Becky. I was informed by, by Happy that the letter of invitation will be sent uh, uh, two, three weeks before the conference, but could you please try to speed this up uh, <laughs> with the power you have because we have partners who uh, in countries where there are no uh, Indonesian embassies. It's a lengthy process to get the visa for, for a representative from Malawi, for example. He has to send it to South Africa. So letters of invitation actually has to be sent as soon as, as possible to, to manage the process. So please do what you can to, 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 to uh, encourage the conference to speed the process up. Thank you. Thanks, Leonard. I will do it. It's, it's on our list of things we're trying to, to advocate for, which was in, including the 16 hotels having some affordable options. Um, what I would recommend, and the same for everyone else, if this is a concern, if you reach out to your focal points, if Leonard, that would be happy, um, and share the names of those who have registered um, to be there that will need this type of visa, we can put together a list. So we, I was doing this for our secretariat team to try and fast track some of those members who 
might find it more challenging. So please only do that if it's a country that needs to get a visa beforehand and might be quite challenging um, and we can prioritise um, sending those names through. If you go to the Indonesian government's website and, and the link is on the global platform logistics site as well, there's a number of countries now that has very recently been updated that can get this visa on arrival. Um, so it won't be all countries and there will be some that will take time, um, but there's quite a longer list than usual on there that can get a visa on arrival for entering Bali. So have a look at that as, as well and we can share that after this meeting too. Um, I'll go to Ruth and then I can see BJ. Uh, uh, so can I just add in, because I don't have a question, I just uh, wanted to add in to what Becky you were saying. Leonard, today uh, the Indonesian representative was there in one of the meetings that we had in the morning. And uh, he actually committed that they will start issuing the letter from today onwards. See, he confirmed that they have already received 900 registration. So they are already working on that and sending the letters. So you can expect the letters to be received uh, in a week's time. If it doesn't, then definitely you please, as uh, Becky said, please put that to happy so that we know and we'll actually follow it up with uh, UNDRR and Indonesian government. Thanks, BJ. And the same if you've registered and not had a confirmation back from UNDRR. So if you've registered and you're waiting, you shouldn't be. So give us an email or, or reach out to your focal point and we can fast track that to be approved as well. Um, Ruth, I'll hand to you. Sorry, I know you've been waiting patiently to add to the okay. uh, interjection. Of the yes. Good morning. I am from the Caribbean. Are you hearing me? I'm from the Caribbean, a small island state, and we are prone to hurricanes, natural disasters. BJ has focused on localization. And I think GND, I am coming forward as a voice for local community grassroots women. When you speak about localization, our voices need to be heard. And I think it's dropping the ball if you don't have financial assistance to help people from the global south. When I go to meetings and open my mouth, I make the connections. I put strong words into my advocacy and that's how I build the partnerships. That's what gives me the power to deliver on local programs. So I think GNDR needs to do more to support the global south in having their voices heard at these events. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth, a really important interjection. Just to be very clear, so the spaces that GNDR have that we shared, the side events, the Ignite stages, um, the speaking stages, um, we have safeguarded that space, we will step back and our local partners that we will be funding will be there. So we have a small number that we can fund. Um, we understand and we would really, really love to be able to support more. Um, but those seven spots that we are sponsoring will be the ones that are speaking. So you won't have GNDR secretariat staff talking about local voice. We'll have local voice there, just a small number and the partners that work on the projects with us, because unfortunately that's our funding system and we were unable to get more funding to sponsor more. But I just wanted to be clear that in those spaces, it is local voice and we are sponsoring a small number of our members, our partners to be there. Um, we also have the Ignite stage slots where we'll directly connect to communities on the front line of risk remotely. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, please do reach out and we can connect as well. That's the limitations that we are working in as a charity as well, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, we'll have around six or seven slots for members that are partners that will be speaking on those events and an equal number of um, slots for the Secretariat staff to make sure that we are practicing what we preach in supporting members in the Global South to be there. But that's a small number and it's very well taken that we need to try and do more to find funding. Um, I can see we're coming to the end of time. We've got one last hand up. Murat, do you want to be our last question, our last no. reflection? <coughs> Over to you. Uh, um... Yes. Uh, Becky, madam, uh, I, uh, yeah, thank you. Hello. Uh, actually, yeah, taking this opportunity, Hello. I would like to appreciate yeah, for such opportunity. And in this regard, we would like just to emphasize that it previously Hello. was mentioned about the localization. 
uh, of initiatives of the projects. And in this regard, the human rights movement of Birdino Kyrgyzstan from Central Asia uh, being the part and the uh, strategic, strategic partner of the GNDR in Kyrgyzstan and in Central Asia uh, is ready to provide the analysis, detailed analysis document regarding the situation, especially with the 98 uranium tailings that are situated in the, on the territory of Kyrgyzstan, and they are encountered in the 10 most dangerous radiation, high level uh, of radiation places in, uh, in the world. And in this regard, we are ready to provide uh, all the uh, necessary information, and all the reports regarding the situation of the local communities who live in the face of uh, risks and threats for their lives. Thank you very much for that inclusion, really important points. And hopefully you'll see some of that in that call to action that we that we share and the importance of linking to these types of issues as well. So thank you very much. Um, we are very nearly at the end of our time. Um, and I can see... I think someone's trying to come in. If you could raise your hand if you want to come in for a question. Um, and Allô? we can. Allô, j'ai levé la main depuis. Ruth, over to you. Allô? 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 Ruth, we can hear oui, you. Uh, je m'appelle Lancy Yeloma Ruth, je suis au Cameroun et mon organisation uh, travaille sur la réduction des risques aussi. Mais je constate que quand vous organisez des très grandes conférences, nous, les petites organisations, nous n'avons pas la possibilité de participer et ce n'est pas bien pour nous. Je ne sais pas si les, les différentes rencontres, l'Afrique francophone est invitée principalement au niveau de l'Afrique centrale. Nous avons tellement de problèmes sur les réductions de risques, les, les déplacés internes, changements climatiques. Mais à chaque fois, l'Afrique francophone, l'Afrique centrale n'est pas représentée. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire pour... pour Je ne sais pas ce qu'il faut faire parce que là, je, je ne sais pas. C'était ma préoccupation. Merci. J'ai même laissé le message avec mon contact pour ceux qui veulent me contacter. J'ai laissé un message inbox avec mon contact. Voilà. Je vous remercie et courage pour tout ce que vous, vous, vous faites. Merci. Thank you very much for that um, and a great reminder. I'd encourage you to reach out to Adesu, who's also on the call, our current acting regional lead for Africa um, and see how we can connect, connect those dots for sure. Um, we've come to the end, slightly over. BJ, I can see your hand is still raised. Did you want to jump in before we close? Actually, yeah, I just actually wanted to give thanks to you, Becky, uh, for, uh, for organizing in such a fabulous way. Becky, you, Daniela, Florencia, and the whole uh, team, which is supporting Aminat and others. And I just actually wanted to assure all the members, let's not see it as an end and one of event. If we have to have a message, let's actually share the lived in experience through our GNDR system so that those experiences can be reflected in the position that we're actually uh, putting forward to uh, UNDRR. Let's be very clear about it bring the evidence and the evidence should speak for itself. Evidence of lived in experience told to us, experienced by us in our work with the communities most at risk. And let's not accept GNDR, uh, UNDR arts, uh, GF, uh, the global platform as the end in itself is a, is a mechanism to raise our voice. It's a platform to raise our voice, then connect, continue to connect with a high level political forum Take it to uh, the COP27 and link it. And let us see how we continue to be relevant by staying together. Thank you very much from my side. I just wanted to give thanks to all of you. And Graciela, I just wanted to actually introduce Graciela as the chair. She is our chair. She spoke uh, and she had intervened in our uh, meeting as well. Thanks, Graciela, for coming forward and bringing out absolutely pertinent, uh, pertinent perspective and uh, guidance. Uh, to the process, we will be very much looking forward to linking uh, the various groups which are not necessarily attending in person, but will ensure they are updated on a daily basis. Let's actually see how we can keep you posted. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for all, all the members, partners, and the colleagues. 
Thanks, BJ. Um, very welcome to closing points. Um, so a couple of closing points and next steps from my side. So thank you very much. This was the very first step in our six week lead up to the global platform. So thank you for being here. Please keep an eye out for the messages that will come through on the community platform on how to engage and how to share with us your plans. Um, you'll see a, a lot of communication coming through both on the community platform and the emails and also on social media. So do get involved um, and we'll be in touch soon with more information. And it's great to see so many of you here. Please do share with us what you're planning on doing at the global platform, what your key messages are going to be. We'd love to hear feedback on those advocacy messages that we shared after you've had some time to think. So please do reach out either through the community platform, through your national focal point, through your GNDR focal point, um, any way that you can. Um, and we look forward to connecting again soon and then seeing you hopefully either in Indonesia or remotely. So a reminder that you can also join remotely and register to join remotely as well. Thanks everyone. Thanks Daniela, Shivangi, Amanata and BJ for your support too and our translators. Brilliant. Thanks everyone. I have some